All right, welcome to another Limitless Potential Technologies video. This video is gonna be on making colloidal nano silver and future videos here coming up are pertaining to the Bendini motor and chrome ray converter, both uh, generators of sorts. Those are next. This is just a video in between as I need to make a batch of uh, colloidal nano silver. So I thought I would show you guys how to make the world's finest colloidal nano silver at home. So I've got my silver plates here spaced evenly apart, about an inch apart. Spacing is accomplished with uh, food grade nylon, nylon bolts and nuts. And then this is medical grade silver, 99.99% minimum purity. And I have a food grade bucket here, HDPE. So I'm going to take distilled water and fill up the bucket. About four of these to fill up the five gallon pail to the correct level. Again, I don't want it over the top of the plate. You want it under the top of the plates because if you put the water over the top of the plates, then it basically uh, shorts out on the narrow strip there, connecting strip, and you get larger particulate, higher amperages across the top. So you want to make sure it's below the top of the, or the wider part of the plates. I'll show you again once I get them in there. Three, uh, I guess we got three and a half. We'll do three and a half. Okay, so we have the distilled water in there, and we have our air stones because we're going to bubble this. We always want to introduce oxygen in, into the mixture while it's brewing, just for a couple of reasons so that it breaks up uh, the particles as they're formed and doesn't allow them to clump together, keeps this nano, and then it also provides the oxygen to encase the nano particulate into a silver oxide sphere. So it makes it more stable and passes across the gut barrier and makes true nano silver that way. Okay, so you can see the water is now bubbling and I'm going to turn on the power supply here, so power is now coming in to the AC-DC converter. We're converting it to 50 volts DC from 120 volt AC from the wall. And then these guys here are the dual timer on-off uh, duty cycle, so you got to delay for both the on and the off time, and they flop back and forth, and then I've got it rigged up so it flops the polarity between the plates. And then those go into our um, output power supplies, which are the voltage and amperage limiting So now I'm gonna turn on, and you can see we have amperage there, a little bit, it's limited the maximum amount, and the 50 volts. And that is currently what's being fed across these two plates. So we're gonna keep those submerged. The water level's not above the top of the plate. As you can see, it's about four inches down. So that's gonna allow for an even uniform nanoparticle to be formed versus if it was up at the top of the plates where those narrow strips are, there'd be larger particles popping off there because the amperage uh, distribution across there isn't even and uniform. Same with the corners. The corner of the plates has potential. Anywhere there's corners, it has potential to pop off larger particles. So if you bend those back, then there's less chance of the amperage jumping across there, the electrons. And we're gonna leave this for roughly three hours and check the PPM on it. And then we're gonna filter it. It's the next day and our colloidal silver is brewed. I've got the orange bucket down over here 
behind me, which I've gotten these two containers of colloidal silver from. Nice and clear. Exactly what you want to see if you've made correct, if you've correctly made colloidal nano silver. <clears throat> I've got a PPM meter here, so you can check. Let's see if I can show you guys. And there, it's reading zero, and when I place it into the colloidal silver, well, it looks like 55 on there because it's backwards, but it's 22. 22 PPM, or roughly 20, we'll call it, <clears throat> which is what I want. So we've got 20 parts per million colloidal silver, and I don't, I mean, you don't really need to filter it. It's just, I'm going for the highest quality uh, you can possibly make. Medical grade colloidal silver. So I'm gonna filter it with a vacuum filter, which I have here. And uh, I'm gonna pour it through. I'm just using coffee filters right now. You could use, um, Use whatever filters you want. Different length on, but the doubled up coffee filter seems to do quite nicely. Switch over to my. Uh, no, this one seems to be working okay. this setup I can only do about two liters at a time and then as I get it completed and pouring it into this white HPP bucket now we've got all of our filtered colloidal silver in <clears throat> this white bucket here so now I'm going to take And beakers and use them to fill up. These are one liter glass jars. I like the glass, it just seems more professional and uh, inert compared to plastic bottles. And if you're not shipping it anywhere, then it's obviously not a concern, the weight difference. I'm making most of this for family and friends and personal use. Uh, Ideally, you want to fill fill the container right to the top, and the container also needs to block UV light, or else the integrity of the silver will disappear. You want um, no UV light and no oxygen getting to your colloidal silver, so it stays clear and in solution versus oxidizing and doing weird things. So I've got 500 ml bottles, and I've got 1,000 milliliter bottles. I'm going to be filling these up. I made about, uh, we did four, what did we do? 16 liters just about, so that's going to be, I'm probably going to do 16 
16 500 mils and then eight one liter bottles. So yeah. Okay, so we've got all of our colloidal silver that we produced here, our 495 milliliter bottles and our one liter bottles. And the final thing that I'm gonna do is to put a plastic shrink seal on the top and label them. You don't have to do this for yours, but I don't mind to look professional. So just apply heat. You can use a heat gun, I'm using a torch because that's all I've got. And you can see, it's shrunk it so it's got a breakable seal so you can tell whether it's new or been used. And then the final stage is a label on each bottle. I'm calling mine Okanagan Colloidals and I've got the recommended dosing, uh, the strength of it and what you can use it for. And again, this isn't necessary but I wanted my final product to look professional. So that's our colloidal silver and